Okay, so below we have the, uh, the graph of a projectile object. So on this worksheet, I'm giving you the position graph of a projectile. So remember, let's always remind ourselves, we're looking at the position of the object um, in the Y here and the X here. Um, I'm going to give some units here. I didn't do that. I apologize. So when you look at a point on this graph, <clears throat> it's going to tell you what its y position is, so how high it, uh, it is up from the original starting point in the y. And it's also going to give you an x position, how far has it moved in the horizontal. Um, a couple things to remember about two-dimensional motion. The first thing we want to remember is the path is parabolic, meaning there's some symmetry. And actually, the symmetry comes about the midpoint. And the midpoint, which is right here, cuts this path right in half. Right? So we have pretty much the same thing going up as we do going down. And that's exactly what you find with two-dimensional projectile motion. When an object flies through the air, it takes just as much time to get to its highest point as it does to return back to its original position up and down, its original Y position. Um, another thing we want to remember, the X and Y dimensions are independent. Independent of one another. This is going to be a really important point for this worksheet because this is going to help us basically um, answer some questions um, by taking the X position of the object and completely separating it from where it is in the Y at any time. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So if we flip over the worksheet, it says make a motion map of the projectile um, in the X dimension below. Well, it wants to say on this one dimensional line here, make a motion map. Say where it is, but only in the X dimension. So the easiest way to do this is to think about, okay, where is this object in the X? Well, let's just drop it down to the X axis. And it's about right there. And if we go through and we do that for all of them, we start to see that this becomes kind of our, our motion map for uh, the x-axis. It's just um, a line. So we can kind of say that, remember, each dot here represents one second. So it took one, two, three, four, five meters to get out to 50. So I'm not going to go ahead and copy all this, but you can remember you can make a a motion map by putting dots. You're basically copying whatever's going to be on this x-axis back up onto this line here. Number two here asks, what's the acceleration of the ball in the x dimension? Well, if we look back, I'm going to use this space right here. If we draw a force diagram, force diagram, remember that when the ball is in the air, the only force that's acting on it is the force due to gravity or its weight down. So there are no forces in the x-axis or x dimension. No forces in x dimension. So if there's no forces, there al that also means that there's no net force. They're balanced because there's zero. That means there's no acceleration. So the acceleration in the x dimension is zero. Zero acceleration. So it's saying compare the initial x velocity to the final x velocity of the projectile. Well, if I go over here, and there's a couple ways you can answer this. And I kind of, I didn't want to waste too much time copying all these down. We can see that in this last bit, it covers five meters in that one second. And it also covered about five meters here in the first. We also know that in the first 10 seconds, it covered 50, sorry, in the first five let me double check this. In the first 50 
or five seconds, it covered 50 meters. So actually, it covered 10 meters here. Sorry about that. 10 meters here. It also covered 10 meters here, not 5 meters. We can check because in 5 seconds it covered 50. So the initial velocity and the final velocity are 10 meters per 1 second. 10 meters per 1 second. So they are the same. Are the same. And can you determine the x velocity of the projectile? Well, we just did. At any point along this x, we know that it's going 10 meters per second. We can put a positive there. So that all kind of fits our understanding of the x dimension, which means everything's constant. The acceleration is 0. The initial, final, and any velocity along the way should all be the same. And we can figure that out using anything that it's 10 meters per second. We can say that you can use the lines to say that's 10 meters in one second. You can say 50 meters in 5 seconds. You can say 100 meters in 10 seconds. 200 meters in 20 seconds. They all give you an answer of 10. So the next part is going to ask you to make a motion map in the y dimension for the projectile. So it starts at a position of 0. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to kind of bring over all of our dots to the y axis. OK, so our object gets up to a, a height of 500 meters, pretty darn high, in 10 seconds. So what we see is we can copy. I'll just do the upward ones here. So I'm copying these down here. And again, this is exactly how your motion map is going to look on the other page. Uh, one more there. Now when I get to the top, I draw this dot here. But then notice there's another dot that's at the same height. So there's actually another one right there, another one right there. And that's where I have the up and the down for you. So draw one up and then draw it coming down. So we see that it actually has another time where it's at the same position. Remember, that kind of makes sense. We're talking about a parabola. There's symmetry. There should be a second time that it reaches that same uh, position. And at 200 seconds, it's back here. So notice this doesn't look, this going up doesn't look a whole lot like this. This one, they're very evenly spaced. Here, as you go up, they gradually are getting closer and closer together. And then when you go down, they're gradually getting more and more spread apart. Well. That fits with our force diagram, that there is acceleration in the y-axis. Look at this net force we have, force of gravity. So um, let's answer this question. What's the name, magnitude, and direction of acceleration the ball is experiencing in the y-direction? The name is the acceleration due to gravity. The magnitude is 10 meters per second squared. And the direction is down, or we can say negative. OK, good. So we're seeing acceleration. We're seeing it's, it's covering a different distance every single time. How long did it take to reach the maximum height? Well, let's just count. It took 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It took 10 seconds. That's an easy one. Just count. OK, this last question is a little bit of a challenge question. It says, at the ball's maximum height, it has a velocity equal to 0. And I should note, I did not correct this. In the y dimension, it definitely is still moving in the x. The, the velocity in the y is 0. It has come up, it stops for a split second, and it comes back down. So if the ball has a velocity of 0 at the top, v equals 0. Can you determine the initial y velocity? So there was an initial upward velocity here. And it gradually slowed down to 0 in 10 seconds. Well, we can kind of use our, our kinematic equation that the change in velocity should just be the acceleration times time. Right? That comes from our original equation that acceleration is just change in velocity over time. 
So how much did the velocity change from here to here? Well, that's what we're looking for. We needed to know it's at zero here, so what was it? It's initial. Well, we know the second everything on the right side of this equation. It had a negative 10 meters per second squared, and it took 10 seconds. So very quickly, we can see that the change in the velocity must have been 100, because it's 10 times 10. 100, and it gets a meters per second. Um, it's going to be a negative because the change is negative. But let's just do a quick reality check. If it's getting shot up, right, we know that the initial must have been positive. The negative sign comes from here that the fact that it lost 100 meters per second as it was going up. So the change is negative 100 meters. So that means that its initial must have been positive 100 meters per second in the y. So initial y velocity, which can be written like this, v naught y equals positive 100 meters per second. All right, so I hope this helps in understanding that we're looking at a parabolic path, has symmetry. In the x dimension, you see a constant motion. In the y dimension, you see downward acceleration due to gravity. So as it's going up, it slows, and as it's coming back down, it speeds up. Hopefully all that information can help you finish this worksheet.